And I'm going to start uh, by introduce, introducing um, Corina, and I've had the pleasure of talking to her on the phone and hearing a little bit about her work, um, and she'll talk to us tonight um, about that. She is a PhD candidate at um, AUT, and she has, if you look at her biography on our program page, she has a cr quite an outstanding um, history of re receiving scholarship awards for her, her research and um, academics. Her current research is looking at strengthening midwifery education in Indonesia using qualitative inquiry. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you now, Karina. And hello, everyone. <laughs> and thank you for having me today. And as Cindy mentioned earlier, that this is one of my uh, PhD project, and I want to share one of the uh, preliminary finding of my uh, this project. So before we start, I want to notice about what Nelson Mandela said about education. So what mr mandela said about education he said that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world i believe this to be true and applicable across so many areas of life not least midwifery and maternal newborn and child health so what if mr mandela's quote it would be adapted so it would read education is the more the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the maternal, neonatal, child health world to achieve sustainable development goals 2030. So now I'm doing PhD uh, in Oakland University of Technology and I want to acknowledge my fantastic uh, supervisors. So I feel privileged under supervision, Associate Professor Judith McArthur Cooper and Dr. Andrea Gilgeson. So, <clears throat> the rational and significant of my study. So, there is a research currently research about newly graduate midwife, especially in lower and middle income countries. Usually, they face a myriad challenges such as feeling less confident because they may have fewer opportunities for hands-on clinical practical. So at this point, sound that midwifery education has been associated with competent and skilled midwife, and it is in line as well with the ICM when they said that midwifery education is one of the three pillars to strengthen midwives globally alongside with legislation and regulation. So that's why, that high quality midwifery education is essential in developing competence and confidence midwives that we are uh, sure if they uh, produce from appropriate midwifery school so they will fit to practice to make a difference in maternal neonatal mortality rates so this presentation is constructed on the central research question, how can midwifery education in Indonesia be strengthened? So the aim of this research is to explore the experience of the participants who involved in the midwifery school and to identify the barriers and enablers how midwifery education in Indonesia can be strengthened. So this data, uh, I took it from the state of the world's mother's report 2013 so when we see from this picture that most newborn deaths only occur in just 10 countries which is one of uh, my which is indonesia is one but when we have a look from this this uh these uh, countries so india they just built the nurse midwife and bangladesh and afghanistan they just have probably made was more than 10 years ago but how about indonesia we still contribute to the trend largest maternal mortality uh rates in the world 
even we have like a long history and a lot of efforts of the development of maybe free school so this is this is uh, many many efforts from my countries to reduce maternal neonatal mortality rates so they start from the focus on the curative they start and then turn to the preventive approach until we have a uh, economic crisis and how the system change so we have <clears throat> We have a community health center and we start a village midwife program. So this is the trigger to open and the prolifer proliferation of maybe free schools in my country because there is a, like an obligation at that time that every, every village has to have a, a one midwife. So that's why we call it a village uh, midwife program. And then we have mother friendly movement. We have, we call it uh, husband alert. And now we have healthy Indonesia. So this is like a team approach, uh, team, team program approach that midwife is one of the team who deployed in the remote and rural areas in my country so when we see from all these uh years and the history of the midwifery education itself so we built the midwifery school from uh in the beginning under dutch colonialization so we start from 1850 so at that time we still under dutch colonialization and the the dutch head of the medical service at the time dr william bush tried to propose to establish a midwifery school from indonesian female because they at that time they just trained the western midwife and finally 1851 a midwifery school opened in jakarta with 20 indonesian female students but after that uh, many happens and there is a re reorganization so after this school closed and then reopen again and then the midwifery school admitted students from junior high school and then around 1990s some nurses were educated to be a midwife so in the beginnings before the person uh, being a midwife, so they have took the nurse program. And finally, in 1996, we have the direct entry program, the diploma of midwifery education from senior high school open. And now around 2000, we have already had the several routes to midwifery education. We have a diploma, we have advanced diploma, we have bachelor and we have master of midwifery and master of applied science in midwifery as well. But when we have a look the number of the midwifery education and then it will become a big issue. So in the beginning, the proliferation, the proliferation of midwifery school uh designed by the government to produce the skilled newly graduated midwife and then they will deploy in the uh, every village in my country so that's why the government uh has seen like uh, make a proliferation of maybe free schools it seems ubiquitous with more than 753 schools divided uh, on diploma, advanced diploma, bachelor, and master. So, from this moment, uh, we also seen it's be become the critical to address quality of education because after uh, the Indonesian government tried to accredit the midwifery school, the status of the category of accreditation still most of the school is c this is like uh so 
there is A, B, C expired and not accredited. So this is like not good result. And even expired or most of, of this maybe free schools uh, have a C uh, status of accreditation. Even even the number of the accreditation school being in uh, evolved, but still the result of the number of maybe free school with the good the good or outstanding result of accreditation is not most of this uh, midwifery school so that's why this is this is a very big problem in my country that in 2015 finally we did not meet the millennium development goals target 2015 because there is still gap on the maternal newborn mortality rates in indonesia even we the, even the government already uh, put a lot of effort, especially to improve maternal neonatal uh, health outcomes. As well as if we use a different term of the newborn mortality rate, but the number still did not meet the MDG's uh, target. So why uh especially uh, my government my government put a lot of effort so we believe it is a common miscon misconception probably that probably midwives only concerned about how to deliver a baby but from from this uh, literature review we can we can find that Midwives uh, is in a unique and privileged position to assist women staying healthy, making choices through good the woman's childbearing circle. So she will be the incredible person to be part of a complex continuum of care, not only from uh, only from uh, the delivery process, but from the moment when a woman start to think uh to have uh about having a child until they deliver a baby probably around 40 second day after the child is born so it's more than uh 10 months and even even uh for the development of the infant child health and the reproductive health as well in my country so during the a uh, circle of the woman is the responsibilities of the midwife so that's why the position of the midwife is very critical so my study uh carry out with the qualitative descriptive as as uh actually this is uh there is a alteration of the methodology so my beginning uh, i start my study from the hermeneutic phenomenology and then we turn to the qualitative descriptive because of the nature and the size of the research i got the ethical approval from au tech auckland uh, new zealand as well as the from the health research ethic committee faculty of medicine pajajaran university indonesia and i conduct face-to-face in-depth structure semi-structure in-depth interview and the data thematically arise analysis i also mention uh, maintain how the rigor is maintained so my study conduct i gathered 37 participants from different uh, 12 different maybe free schools include two board of uh two board of two Central Board of Midwifery uh, Association in my country from uh, eight cities in six provinces. I'm sorry, I couldn't uh, show you. This is the summary of my data collection. So I have to travel uh, from one city to another city in different provinces. But in this case, I just want to show you the data from the midwifery educators. So this is 
the number of the participants that I gather. So there is some Indonesian midwife, in the, uh, midwifery educators, midwifery students, newly graduated midwife, and obstetrician. So why I also gather the obstetrician? Because in the beginning of the settlement of midwifery school in Indonesia, it's set by the obstetrician. And even now, most of us, in some of uh, midwifery school, obstetrician still hold the position as the head of midwifery uh, department. Mm. So this is the summary of my data from 37 participant that I have. So I have more than 400 pages uh, transcription and with more than uh, 2,539 minutes I conduct the in-depth interview and analyze more than 100,000 words. And this is the preliminary, find, preliminary findings. I'm sorry. Uh, for the slow motion, wait. <clears throat> So this is the preliminary findings, and we still uh, build it about the same. So we call it maybe free teaching and learning, maybe free clinical experience and structural and external factor. What the maybe free educators uh, most of state in this research. So what what motivate lectures of maybe free? So most of the midwifery uh, teachers, or we call it midwifery lecturers, they feel passionate about midwifery because one of the reasons also because the blessing of our law. So this is like the cultural, the religious belief that what we done, what we have done, it will uh, reward it by the God. So even, even probably they stress that even they don't like it or they don't uh, they want to give up but they believe that what the make they motivate to stay in midwifery because the religious belief so they call it blessing blessing of Allah is like the like we got reward the good uh, when we have a good deed so the God will give the uh, a good because of that. So this is what they believe. And they said that we need to improve the midwifery competency-based curriculum. So even, even we have, so the this data gathered from a broad of midwifery school, but most of the midwifery teachers said that we still need to improve midwifery competence-based curriculum. So even we already have the midwifery curriculum, uh, like competency-based curriculum, but still they said that it still needs to uh, improve. Basically, the midwifery, uh, the Ministry of Health, they they produce the core curriculum of it uh, from uh, for the diploma or midwifery program. But for the advanced diploma and the bachelor, they still build it. So that's why they say that we, we have to improve our uh, curriculum. This is why uh, the important, uh, I want to stress why why the improvement of the midwifery competence-based curriculum is needed because they said there is no standardized its midwifery program in all the school because we have 
we have a different kind of every school that I mentioned earlier. We have diplomas, we have advanced diploma, we have bachelor. So uh, currently there is no differences or uh, competences between all these programs. So that's why it's, it's make uh, quite confusing for them. About maybe free teaching and learning, they say they just built the tutorial system. So that's why they have to want to improvement on the maybe free teaching and learning. They said that uh, they uh, participating participating in class because they just become a tutor. They will become a facilitator and it is divided in some small group. And it's totally a different with when they was in school. So that's why they call it, it's a different system. And they also mentioned about the need to improve their English because many of these midwifery uh, lecture, they, they feel that they don't have enough uh, knowledge in English to know and understand the material, especially in English, because they used to read the journal and the textbooks in English, but because of the lim uh, language barrier, they said they not really have a good understanding to read good references about midwifery. So that's why they, need, they want to have a mastery in English. And another one, uh, why the midwifery teaching and learning need to be improved? Because they have to make sure how the class is run from uh, unmotivated student become motivated student because they most of this uh, lecturer found that most of the students they entry to midwifery school because of their parents or their family not because of their own intention to become a midwife so that's why it's very challenging and it's very hard work for them if they want to build and because they said that cannot force someone to become a midwife but they have to face it in class so that's why how they build the interesting teaching and learning to make midwifery students passionately uh, want to become a midwife The another one is uh, the ability for them to uh, do a clinical practice. So they said that most of these teachers, they not currently they don't do any clinical uh, practice anymore. So that's why they said that it's very dangerous if they just transfer all the knowledge and skill based on the textbooks, not really from the uh, daily practice as a midwife. They sell it. I, so one of, this, one of these teachers said, what happened then? I feel that I did not have my soul at all during my teaching time when I thought about palpa palpation. I feel empty. Because it's been a while I haven't done palpation. I decide to with several of my friends though. So they try she tried to open independent practice to maintain our ability. Because as a lecturer, we do not only have the theory, there is a skill I experienced was. If we wanted to be considered as a midwifery lecturer, we should be practiced in the real setting service. My hands have become numb do not have skill. But most of, of these teachers, they don't have uh, enough clinical practice to do it. Another one about the midwifery clinical experience. They know that the midwifery students burden with the number of midwifery, uh, midwifery target. So, 
from this project i found they said about uh, we call it about partes pandang partes pandang is only view or watch the delivery process but they write it down as a skill so they know it about that and even even they pass from the midwifery school they we call it the literary midwife because they have uh they they write it down the midwifery skills that they not really competent on it so they say that there is a target for me with free students to achieve the skill. Sometimes I don't know whether this is true. They are sincerely honest or not because the target is too much. So each me with free students, they have to uh, assisting the woman minimum 50, 50 uh, delivery process. But, but they said uh, they not really know this is uh, true or not. next about the continuity of care so they know and uh, understand that the continuity of care experience is very beneficial for maybe for students but they still have to learn how to uh, provide the good way for the student because it's not uh, like how to prepare for the method the schedule about the fee about the feel as well as about the mentor and the next is about the process prior to clinical uh, experience so basically the midwifery uh, student have to attend the classroom uh, and have to know the theory and then they have to be practiced and demonstrating their skill in the laboratory. And they have to pass the examination before the clinical experience. So they have to pass it before do the maybe free clinical experience. But they just wonder why the students still cannot do the competencies in the real setting. So that's why they call it it's com it's complex it's complicated and made me sometimes want to give up because so tired the bureaucracy the system over again and again makes me occasionally desperate so this is about the clinical placement so when when the midwifery students uh, go to the clinical placement each clinical site have to memorandum of understanding with the maybe free school so they have the specific timeline or the period to uh to to arrange all this place so they don't have like the exact place to go to the clinical placement so that's why the process for the arrangement of the clinical site made some of this midwifery lecture uh like want to give up because the system and about the structural and external factor they said that uh it's very hard and difficult when say about the accreditation moment so they said that they put a lot of energy on it because the status of their maybe free school will be defined by the result of the accreditation process so that's why they pull all the energy all the time all the feeling for it and not really make the prioritize of the teaching and learning process so that's why they need uh want to improvement of the accreditation process and about the different kind of midwifery, uh, midwifery program as well so i as i mentioned earlier about diploma advanced diploma bachelor so they said that the different kind of midwifery uh, program raised the confusing feeling to all these midwifery students they notice about that 
the collaboration needs between the midwifery association and the government because we of course we cannot give the good support for the midwifery school if we don't make the good collaboration with all parties and this is about the standard size of midwifery school so one of the external factor they they call it how difficult all these parties to make agreement about different kind of maybe free school. They also mention about the cost. So they mention about the cost of being a midwife because this is uh, like the they feel privileged to become a midwife. So in the beginning, they have to pay a lot of, uh, so this is like one of the expensive uh, school in Indonesia to entry the midwifery school. So each stage or it's, uh, they have to pay even for the clinical experience. And after that, they have to pay as well to apply for the registration as a new midwife uh, they have to hold the training uh, before to apply for the job vacancy so that's why they said it's very costly to become a midwife this is one of the notification about the structural and external factor that they need a support from the midwifery association or the midwifery school because of the requirement as a new midwife. So, from uh, this preliminary finding from the midwifery lecture, I can uh, make a discussion that the efforts to deliver high quality education have to deal with the various challenges and a broad qualification coalition of national authorities, professional association and uh, communities. Because if we want free education and to meet the global standards, of course that the status of the midwife recognized by the government. And at this stage, the midwifery association is a significant catalyst to work together with midwifery education in the promotion of the women's health care. High quality of midwifery school can lead midwifery students to demonstrate essential competencies and produce fully graduated midwife who provides midwifery care to mother and baby. So fully qualified midwife as health provider are playing a profound role in the partnership with women and baby. So there is, uh, it is believed that the strengthening midwifery education to produce qualified midwives seems to be in, inevitable in my country. I think most of uh, across the world for this. So thank you for your attention. Uh, back to you, Cindy. Thank you so Thank you much. So much. It was fantastic. It's really amazing that you had so much um, information gathered there, and your synthesis of all that information was um, really pretty um, telling. It's really interesting, the spirit of um, the midwives that feel like it's difficult and such a challenge to to do what they want to be doing and continue to feel um, you know supported in that. So we did have one question here on the side to begin with, um, and that was the question was: um, Are the students required to get their experiences signed off in the practice setting um, by the midwife overseeing them? Uh, yes, thank you so much for your uh, question, Jen. So yeah, uh, basically, basically before before the uh, so the midwife the midwifery students have the mentor in the clinical side. 
but the mentor uh, who define the mentor is like if uh, if uh, the sen if you are senior midwife in the uh, maternity ward or in the in the clinical side it's like automatically that you will become a mentor for the midwife so they have they have midwifery tar they know the midwifery target of the students and they just signed it because feel a pity of the student because of the target you know what i mean so sometimes they just signed out the the target of this midwifery student so like there is the cases like this i give you the one example one one stud, one woman divided into five students like uh first student a uh, student a did the first stage student b did the second stage student c did the third stage but all these students write the delivery process completely and the mentor will signing out sign out the uh this report as a midwifery target that all these students assisting the woman to deliver a uh, process to delivering the baby is it answer your question it seems like that might be an issue then of oversight like who is monitoring that the that these evaluations is there a governing body that's making sure that the mentors are really um exactly who is monitoring the monitors is the question um and it sounds like that might be what you're looking at really as part of the systems approach of what you're looking at yes that's the big gap for that so uh we have we have midwifery uh association we have like the we call it bidan delima so it's like the standard of midwifery the private midwifery practice or the standard of the maternity clinics but because the uh out of number of the midwifery students so that's why we not really we not really monitor each like it's uh it's competencies for its students is it answer i think so I'm, I'm wondering if as part of the school system are there um are there precepting um coordinators that come out and interact with the the um you know the midwives who are overseeing the students to check in and and kind of talk to them and see what's happening yes jane absolutely <laughs> so that's why most of these midwifery lecturers say that it's very complicated even we try to coordinate it because the because we we not really have to manage the clinical sites because the all these clinical sites not under the midwifery school so it's it's like a different body so we have to manage the administrative thing be, prior to uh, clean with free clinical experience so yeah it's 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 complicated system for that we try which based on the uh, based on my data they try they try to manage they try to make a coordination between all these all these parties but still but still the the big uh gaps it happens i'm wondering karina do you have a sense of how um that that system might change in, in looking at all that data do you see a, a pathway for change yeah so that's why from this data we uh when when we found about the uh the theme how we make improve improvement uh so we have to make sure from the a 
from A until Z. I mean, like the how the class run, how the laboratory, how about the learning resources, how about the human resources. So all this, all this uh, parties will be involved, not only single uh, way to make improvement. So that's why we I call it like a symphony in the compound world. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you have pretty good governmental support with this project? This project? Yes. So I hold, yes, I hold the scholarship from uh, my PhD scholarship funded by the Ministry of Research, Technology and Higher Education. And this uh, project funded by the Ministry of Finance. Yes. So both of my scholarships. Uh, my gov so my government yes very very support and you can see actually from all the strategies uh in front how my government try to reduce make an improvement to in to uh like to strengthen me with wife especially and maybe very school in my country so their effort is very very big they would just want to reduce the maternal neonatal mortality rates so so that's why it's still like a big question why the maternal mortality maternal neonatal mortality rate in my country is still not reduced significantly even we already have all these efforts especially when we try to build the midwife and put a village midwife a uh, program uh, there's a question here. There's actually um, a comment and um, a couple comments. Um, one is, is that a picture of your students in this picture, this thank you page? Uh, this, um... So yeah, when 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 I mentioned about why they not feel competent after the training, because when they did the clinical clinical experience, they not really do it. So that's why they they call it only feel, only watch the delivery process because they not really do it from the beginning until the end. So that's why they not really feel competent and confident after they complete their school. And uh, about the critical thinking, we have we have the midwifery curriculum, and it is said that yes, it's based on the critical thinking. But I think there is a still gap between the implementation and the theory. Fantastic. I think we have time for um, one more question. If anybody has another question or comment for Karina. Lots of thank yous. Thank you so much. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, Corina, uh, I'm gonna just want to, yeah, yeah, thank you, Cindy. I want to um add something about the continuity of care. Mm -hmm. So the number of the continuity of care, most of these uh, students only have to follow one or three continuity of care experiences. We have we have the continuity of care experiences, but only one or two for Great. its uh, students. Okay. So yeah, that's not a lot. Okay, Corina, I'm just gonna um, close, get ready to close this session so we can get ready to open the next. And I just wanna um, give everybody in the room a few closing comments. So, um,